Welcome back. Today we're rewriting the Unix shell command make directory. And to make a directory, we'll call the kernel function make directory with a set of permissions, and that will ask the file system to please create a directory. Run it and see. That work? Yes. That's it. That was make directory. That's all it does. It calls the kernel, and that's all it does. Gosh, that was easy. Of course, if we're going to write this like it exists in BSD 4.4, there are a bunch of things to think about. And the first one of those I want to talk about is file permissions as they relate to directories. You might recognize this base8 number here as a set of permissions, but I'm going to write them out in their binary form so we can talk about what they mean. This is not syntax you can use in C, but it's okay for now. The bits of this number mean the owner has read, write, and execute permissions. The group has read, write, and execute permissions, and everyone else can read, write, and execute too. But what does it mean to write or execute a directory? Like, permission to read a directory is to see its contents. That makes sense. Write a directory is to have permission to make a file or subdirectory inside it. And, well, the execute directory is to be able to open it. I'll delete that quick before you notice I typoed permission. Now, the truth of Unix is that those permissions don't always do what we think they'll do. Like, write permission on a directory doesn't really do anything. You have to have execute permission to rename a file inside of it. And if you have that execute permission, you can rename a file inside of a directory even if you don't have write permission for that file. So that's confusing. If we want, instead of remembering that sequence of binary digits I typed out a second ago, we can use the flag variables defined in the sysstat header and documented in man change mode. Each one of those has one or more binary digits set, like this one, is stat read write execute group, which has the last three bits set. But honestly, I don't know if remembering what these letters mean is easier than typing out the digits. Gosh, these are difficult to type. So that means the same thing. So what kind of flags does make directory have? Whew, there are only two. On my computer running macOS, it has verbose mode, but I know that didn't exist in BSD 4.4, so I'll skip it. As we're used to, we'll write out our C program, getting the command line arguments in the old style. And we'll use the built-in way to deal with command line arguments, which is called git opt from the Unix standard header. And git opt has its own tiny language, because everything in Unix is a tiny language. So as long as there are options, we'll get the next option. And that could be one of dash m with an argument, the colon denotes an argument, meaning please make the directory have this mode. Mode's another word for permission. Or it could be dash p, meaning please make all of the parent directories along the path I give. We'll handle both options. Oh, and gotta declare that variable first. In the case of dash p, we'll want to do something later, so we'll set a flag. Remember that a c switch will move on to the next case if you don't write a break, which is a thing I forget just about every time I write c. In the case of dash m, we'll record the mode, which is the command line argument after the flag, which the git opt library has placed in the opt arg variable. If it makes us a little nervous that c libraries go around setting the names of effectively global variables, I think that's a pretty okay reaction to have. But c trusts us to do the right thing, and I'll try my best not to betray that trust. And I'll need to go on back and declare all the variables I've used so far. It's possible that the user hasn't provided a mode, so if not, we'll set our octal mode, which we'll be passing to the system call, to the default. All permissions, octal number 777. To set permissions, we're going to turn to our good friends git mode and set mode, which thoroughly confused me a few screencasts back. It's coming back to me that set mode returns a value that represents the difference between two modes, like plus x means whatever the mode was before, but executable. We'll check that what we got was an okay mode, erroring out if it wasn't. But if it was, we'll use git mode to apply that change. And for cleanup, we'll free up the memory allocated by set mode and declare the variables we've used, like o mode is the final octal mode. There can be many directory names given to make directory on the command line, so we'll iterate over them. We've processed all the command line options, so the option index will be at the end of the options and before the directory names. We'll start from there. If we fail to process a directory name, the Unix thing to do is to return an exit value of 1, so we'll record that. And let's iterate. Our args are already initialized, so we'll just run until there are no more arguments. Our variable success will hold whether this particular directory creation was successful. If we set the dash p flag, we know we need to be creating intermediate paths, and we'll use our own custom function build to do that. We haven't written that yet. And if that fails, then we've failed. Our success will equal zero. And the rest is just a whole bunch of error checking. We want to check if make directory works, and we want to warn if it doesn't. We'll use warn instead of error so we can keep moving on and trying the next directory name. If something's gone wrong, we'll set our exit value to 1, meaning we've failed somehow. 
If we're good so far, it means we've created a directory. So we'll try to change the mode of that directory to whatever the user asked for, or maybe our default 777. And we want to check if that fails, too. And if that has failed, we'll warn the user. And then set our exit value to 1. Finally, we've finished, so we can exit the program and return that exit value to the user. I've missed a few includes, like getting the error and warn functions from the error header that we just used, and getting the standard library too. Okay, fingers crossed for compilation. Let's see how we did. Oh no! We need to write the function that makes a directory's parents for the case of dash p, and we're nearly to six minutes, so I'll wrap up without writing that. Instead, we'll write a stub that returns something bad, so we can fix that up next time. I think we'll just return zero. Let's test it out, ignoring the dash p flag for now, of course. We can make a directory called hello, and there it is. How about a directory with a mode of 644 called hi? Yep, there it is. That's it. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, there are more at rewritinghistorycasts.com. We dig very deep into programming topics to give you a unique set of tools to approach programming with. Check it out.